Hello. Uh, spiritual hierarchy and a dark rebellion. Ghost. Where do they fit in? Um, they fit in somewhere. God created everything. So he's he doesn't waste anything. Uh, so where do they fit in? That's a really tough one there. That's a tough one because what we call ghost uh, presumably spirits of former human beings presumably because that's all you can do is presume uh, there there could be they could be anything maybe they were never human maybe they're demonic maybe they're angelic maybe it's somebody you knew in life maybe anything uh, you don't know who they are what they are that's the problem you don't know and I have had more hauntings than anybody I've even read about, let alone known. And if you watch my channel, you'll catch uh, most of my stories, not all of them. And I'm telling this outdoors because I really don't care to tell this in my house, which is about a half a mile from where I'm sitting. But then again, about a five minute walk that way in the woods is an old cemetery where um, I think story 19 took place there, story 19 or 20 where my daughter and I saw uh, some people dressed up like from about 1850. Uh, so they're pretty much can be anywhere, outdoors, in a house, could be in a new house, a new building, could be in an old house. Uh, I've, ex yeah, I've experienced them in the army, I've experienced them at my job site. I've experienced them with other people who've seen what I've seen, some of them. So, ghosts, where do they fit in in the spiritual hierarchy? I prepared some notes, and uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to go over them. Corny as this hat is, it's a really good hat for a, a cold, rainy kind of day. It's drizzling out. Really, actually, a very functional hat for this kind of weather. Mid-November, upstate New York. Very light drizzle, not enough to cancel my uh, video shoot. Uh, ghosts, as in the sort of spirits associated with haunting those yet living. They're mentioned in the Bible, but scarcely so. They're, now see, particularly the Protestant churches I've gone to, off and on through my life, they argue there are no such thing as ghosts, they're all demonic. Um, I don't find any biblical uh, support for that stand, really. And I also don't find any biblical support for people who claim to know who these spirits are. Except in a couple, that's not true. There are a couple instances where they did, and I'll get to that. The whole argument as to what the true nature of what we call ghost has long been debated by Christians and atheists, theologians, scientists, doctors, writers, sinners, and saints. As my video series will relate, I have seen and experienced many a ghost in my life, and yet I'm not even sure as to what or who any of them were. And that is what makes haunting so unnerving. The topic is a nebulous one hard to grasp. <clears throat> Taking hold of it's like grabbing a fistful of pudding. I believe the true nature of ghosts is deliberately kept a mystery as part of God's plan and order. But that is just what I think. So what exactly does the Bible say about ghosts? And it does. Picture this. It's late at night. It's dark. It's windy. You and your friends are out on, an open, on a ship anchored out in an open boat on a dark sea. You're sitting up. Some of you are talking. Maybe if you were sleeping, it's late. Uh, open boat. You have no flashlights, no spotlights, no radios, no cell phones. The night sky is not bleached out by the glow of large modern cities. It's just the stars and the moon and the sea, the reflections off the sea of the star and moon lighting things. The only noise beside the sound of water lapping up against your boat is the occasional voices or snoring of your friends, your fellow disciples of Jesus Christ. Suddenly you and your companions see a figure of a man walking on the water coming straight towards you in the dark. What would you think? 
How would you react to that? I'd freak out. I think anybody would. In the New Testament, it is perfectly clear that Jesus' disciples not only believed in ghosts, but they were also afraid of ghosts. Consider the following two cases where the disciples thought they were experiencing a haunting. Okay, I'm reading the scripture here from uh, Matthew 14, 25 through 27. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it's I, don't be afraid. His disciples thought he was a ghost. And Jesus taught them about all things spiritual. Apparently, Jesus did not teach them that there's no such thing as ghosts. They're just demonic or something. Apparently, he didn't teach them that, or they would not have thought it was a ghost. There's another situation in the New Testament where the disciples thought Jesus was a ghost and were afraid. Well, they're still talking about this. This is, um, all right, Luke 24, verse 36 through 41. It's a bit of reading. This is after Jesus was crucified and rose from the dead and been seen, you know, by some in, in town. He, he, word was getting around. That people were seeing Jesus, who everybody knew had just been crucified and buried in the tomb not long before that. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do, you doubt, why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of the joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of boiled, broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. And I've read one scripture say that ghosts don't eat. You know, so he didn't admonish them for thinking he was a ghost. I think note that. Um, what else did I have? Let's stick a note. Oop, yeah, it did. Sorry, my notes are sticking. All right, so the mention of ghosts in these two scriptures is most likely not the central theme of the events related. It's not. They don't make a big deal of ghosts in the Bible, Old or New Testament. Uh, it's not the message of the Bible. Definitely not the central theme. Um, well, in a way it is, the afterlife spiritual life. However, these two scriptures are very useful in establishing three things concerning ghosts and what Jesus and his contemporaries thought of ghosts and hauntings. One, the people closest to Jesus believed in ghosts. Two, Jesus never told his disciples that ghosts do not exist. He did not admonishing them, admonish them for believing ghosts exist. Three, he understood their fears and respectfully comforted them. Gentle compassion and understanding is a reoccurring theme with both the Father and the Son. These men were with Jesus day and night for years as his disciples, and his followers, and his students, and his friends. It stands to reason that the disciples of Jesus received the very best instruction on spiritual matters ever afforded to man. Who better could teach you about spiritual matters than Jesus Christ in the flesh? In these two scriptures, they clearly believed in ghosts. He didn't rebuke them for that belief. The Old Testament makes what could be interpreted as a reference for ghosts and mediums as well. In the following, Saul used a medium to communicate with the spirit of the deceased King Samuel in order to seek his advice on military matters. Uh, this is out of the Old Testament. <clears throat> Quite a bit of reading. And then I'm going to go on my own experience. 1 Samuel 28, verse 7. Who's looking at me? 
I've got company, it's not a ghost. Somebody in a truck. Alright, I'm going to drive on. And they're driving on too, so as soon as I looked over at them, they took off. People always wonder what you're doing. You know, I try to do these in my backyard, and even though I live in a small village, you get my neighbor's kids, their dogs, their lawnmowers interrupt loud cars. I'm just going to have to go right out into the woods. So, um, 1 Samuel. Saul then said to his attendants, Find me a woman who is a medium, so that I may go and inquire of her. There is one in Endor, they said. So Saul disguised himself because it was against the law to be a medium. And it doesn't say that in here. So he disguised himself, putting on clo other clothes. And at night, he and two men went to the woman. See, it was against the law, and he didn't want her to see. If she saw it was Saul, she wasn't going to admit that she was a medium. So he disguised himself. Consult the spirit for me, he said, and bring up for me the one I name. She, she was a medium. She could conjure up spirits of the dead, ghost. But the woman said to him, Surely you know what Saul has done. He has cut off the mediums and spiritualists from the land. Why have you set up a trap for my life to bring about my death? Is it punishable by death to be a medium? Uh, Saul's own. The woman asked, Whom shall I bring up for you? Saul said, Bring up Samuel. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out to the top of her voice and said to Saul, Why have you deceived me? You are Saul. Then the king, Saul, said to her, Don't be afraid. What do you see? The woman said, I see a spirit coming up out of the ground. What does he look like? Saul asked. An old man wearing a robe is coming up, she said. Then Saul knew it was Samuel. And he apparently was not in heaven, but in Sheol, S-H-E-O-L. I never pronounced that right. It's pronounced different than it's spelled. He was not apparently in heaven, but he was in Sheol, in a state of rest and dormancy. Um, Saul knew the ghost he faced was that of the late King Samuel. This is usually the exception as people who happen into hauntings as well as ghost hunters, uh, investigators seek out hauntings. Most often they can't be absolutely certain of the true identity and nature of what they encounter. Jesus Christ and his disciples knew the value of being able to discern ghosts from evil spirits from a darker realm. Uh, this is 1 John 4, verse 1 through 4. Jesus said, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not, is not, is not from God. Every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. That's how you test. They acknowledge Jesus Christ, the Son of God. But if they can't say that, acknowledge that, they're not from God. And some people interpret that scripture to mean the spirit of spiritual, the gift of spiritual discernment, to be able to tell if somebody's a false prophet. Uh, somebody comes preaching, but they're not really preaching in the name of God, or it could be to, t to test spirits themselves. You know, if they can confess that Jesus is the Son of God, then they're of God. They're good. If they can't, they're not. First John 4, verse 1 through 4. My interpretation of that. Almost done with the notes. The ability to discern spirits, good from evil, is considered a gift from God. As such, feel free to ask God for this. God said, ask me for wisdom, I give it freely. And he just did really gift me with some wisdom on a subject. Uh, unbelievable how he illuminated something for me about, about some things going on. And I, I never would have known. And God, God revealed some things to me. And I asked him for wisdom on a, a matter 
and suddenly uh, things were revealed to me quite plainly on a matter. So ask God for wisdom on this and other things. One more, um, 1 Corinthians 12, 10 says, To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the ability to distinguish between spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. But one of the gifts is the ability to distinguish uh, between spirits. That's 1 Corinthians 12, 10. And um, <clears throat> there, are, um, I think that's all I have for notes. Ah, ghost. There are very few times in my life, of all the spirits I've encountered, that I could tell you for certain who they were. Uh, the one, I'm pretty sure, Memento More, the story, I think it's 29, I'm not sure. Memento More. I'm pretty sure that was the former resident of that house. Um, his actions uh, revealed that, and people that had known him well and knew the house said he was there yet. And there were a few others uh, that I felt pretty certain uh, who they were. Usually former tenants, residents. Uh, but, you know, I've seen quite a few spirits and uh, I've got things going on at my house right now off and on hauntings uh, I don't know had some things just pick up and fly off the table right in front of me heard voices my dogs heard them too he reacted um, I had a picture painting that my father made hanging on the wall on a nail and my father made these bolo ties, necklaces, western. He cut the stones, everything. Maybe I'll take a picture, I'll put it in here. I'll put a picture of this in here. I wasn't doing anything. Suddenly I heard something fall off the wall in the room it was in, and there was nobody else in the house. I didn't really think anything of it until I went in that room and uh, saw the painting had fallen off the wall. Though the nail it was hung on was still there in, in place. Uh, okay, it was on the floor, but the strange thing was the bolo ties that were hanging on the nail behind the painting, uh, they weren't on the floor, they were over about four feet over on the counter. So the painting fell off, the bolo ties were hanging on the same nail the painting was on, but the bolo ties were placed on the counter a good four or five feet away while the painting was on the floor. I had a bottle fly off the table in front of me. It almost hit my dog. My dog didn't seem to mind. The bottle just picked up and left. Went halfway across the room. I was pretty much, and I wasn't even touching the table. I was sitting in front of it, you know. Um, I've had a lot of things happen outside, out back. Uh, I can't talk about one it involves a tragedy of somebody there just a year ago um, I can't talk yeah, it's a far chance that this person's family would hear this video but just in case I definitely have some things going on with that uh, situation where somebody's seen skulking around where the tragedy occurred late at night and I hear, hear certain things that I'm not even going to say here. It's pretty frightening. But, you know, I pay the rent there, and I believe in Christ, and I'm not out there seeking these things, so I'm not going to let them drive me away either. I'm not afraid. Christ didn't call us to be afraid of things. You know, we're not supposed to be afraid of things as Christians. I don't know, just a bunch of things going on. Had another thing, another plastic bottle, kind of a heavy one, just fell over and on the table and just a lot of things I see things so I'm doing this video out here in the woods um, what's to be said about spirits ghosts I never I don't know who they are or what they are what their motives are who motivates them you know are they good are they evil are they 
Do they have a, a will? Do they have a motive? Do they have a personality? Are they just energy trapped? Most of the ones I've experienced uh, definitely seem to have a, a purpose. A lot of times they're just standing staring at me. Sometimes they're moving things around. Sometimes they're trying to get a message out. Uh, that this or that that they don't like one time they particularly didn't want a certain person in my house it was pretty obvious uh, sometimes there can be animals um, you sh sometimes I just see them walking and they don't seem to see me and uh, like the ghosts that I see not far from here and up in the graveyard uh, they were dressed up like 1840 two women and a man and walked right in front of me in the graveyard uh, about from me to the camera um, and I said hello to them and they didn't even seem to hear or see me at all they didn't acknowledge me at all sometimes the ghosts look like cloudy white figures sometimes they look like gray mist sometimes they look like black mist sometimes they look like people solid sometimes they look like the soldiers I saw um, they were solid from the waist up and then they kind of faded out from the waist down and they just floated in the air in front of me like a collage sometimes they look like shadows sometimes they look solid sometimes I often I've thought they were as real as anybody I'd like meet in a store or anywhere they look very solid very real just they're always acting strange in strange clothes, old clothes usually. Sometimes they're dressed in white, like a robe. Where do they get their clothes from? So ghosts, where do they fit into the spiritual hierarchy? I don't know. I guess it, it, they could be, ghosts could be anything. They could be good, they could be evil, they could be neither, they could be former humans, they could be people you knew. They maybe never were human. It could be anything. Uh, so it's hard to really say where they fit in. I do believe that God created all things, spiritual and material. So I believe He knows where they fit in, and that's all that matters. That's the important thing. God knows where they fit in. God knows who and what they are. That's the thing that matters. Uh, Jesus didn't tell His disciples that ghosts weren't real. That's pretty obvious. He didn't tell them that. Saul in the Old Testament believed in spirits, or he wouldn't have consulted a medium to conjure up uh, the ghost of uh, Samuel, right? There's nowhere in the Bible that says all ghosts are demonic. It doesn't say that. Um, it doesn't say they're good either. You, you know, you, Christ said you need to test them. If, if you're confronted with one, test them. They admit that Jesus is Christ, the Son of God. You don't have anything to worry about if they can acknowledge that. Uh, Ghosts can deceive you, they can lie to you, uh, they, they may do something, it could be good or evil, or neither. I think, sometimes I've thought about it, I think uh, they're a mystery, ghosts have always been a mystery. If you read, ever read Shakespeare, he's got ghosts in just about every play he wrote. Um, ghosts are in the Bible, sparingly, but they are in the Old and New Testament. I think they add a layer of mystery. You know, we'll never know. This side of the grave will never know, really, what they are. I don't claim to know. Though I've experienced quite a few of them, and I still am experiencing them. Uh, it's just the way I'm wired. I don't know. But it adds a level of mystery. It adds another dimension to our world. Even, if, you know, take it for what it worth. I think in the long run, two things to take away of ghosts and where they fit in in the spiritual hierarchy God knows first off God knows who and what they are he created them whatever they are the second thing is um, I think you know, don't go seeking you know, a couple of things don't seek after them you may invite something evil into your life uh, and three I think they add a layer of intrigue to our existence here you know, it's like the spice of life or something, you know. They add us something, another, another dimension to our existence on earth before we become ghosts again. Spirits with the Lord in His realm. 
Well, there's so much to say about this topic. I'll tell you one thing. Uh, living in a haunted house is not a pleasant thing at all. It's one thing to experience them outside of your house, but your home is supposed to be where you lay down, your refuge, your place of peace. And if you've got things going on in your house, I'll tell you what, it's no fun. It's no fun. So I think that's all I've got to say. It's starting to rain, picking up a bit. But that's what I want to say about ghosts and the uh, spiritual order, the hierarchy, or spiritual order ranking. That's really, I, I didn't answer that, but they fit in there somewhere. I'm not sure where. Below God. I can guarantee you that, unless it's the Holy Ghost, or they're of God's kingdom, you know, but... Alright, I'm just repeating myself at this point. Take care.